This fishing lure right here goes by many names. Mid strolling. Hover rig. Hover shot. Hover strolling. The Mickey rig. The Mickey rig. Hanging in a minnow. Called it moping. This is a crappie jig. But even though the amount of names you can call this fishing technique might make it sound confusing, it truly is one of the simplest fishing lures you can fish. In today's video, I'm going to teach you all about the jig head minnow technique in master class form from A to Z, beginner to advanced for every angler. Wherever you fish, this technique is for you. My name's Tyler, and let's talk about it. Another giant, another giant. Look at that, y'all. I can't believe what I just caught. Yes! Professional angler Jeff Gustafson using this technique won $300,000. Oh, Canada, you have a Bassmaster Classic champion. And Jacob Wheeler using this technique won $100,000. Mr. Jacob Wheeler! And I, using this exact technique, have hardly won any money, but I've had a lot of fun, and that to me is priceless. Cool. So I'm gonna split this video on the Demiki rig, the, the hover stroll, the mid stroll, whatever you wanna call it, into three different sections. First being the gear you need, the rod, reel, line, and of course, the jig head and the, and the soft plastic you need to do this technique. The second section being an on the water demonstration showing you the exact retrievals. And then third, I'm gonna show some on the water live scope screen recordings to demonstrate what exactly is going on down there underneath the water when a fish follows this bait and eats it. And before I begin, I wanna reiterate this technique is not not just for bass fishermen who have expensive bass boats and forward-facing sonar. This technique can be used by anybody, and I'm gonna prove it here on video today. If the bass in your body of water are feeding on bait fish at all at any time of the year and the water clarity is anything but super dirt clarity, you can catch fish on this technique. So let's first talk about the tackle needed, the baits, and of course, the rod, reel, and line to make this technique the best for you. And so I'm gonna talk about kind of the, the purpose of this to start, which is it is a bait fish imitation technique. It is not imitating bluegill for the most part it can but not for the most part it's not it's not imitating crawfish for sure and it's usually not imitating giant bait fish like uh, like salmon and gizzard shad it can but for the most part this is a thread fin it is a it is a blue herring whatever you call small bait fish in your body of water that is what this here imitates but unlike this lure right here the paddle tail swim bait it actually has no paddle tail and that's on purpose when this bait right here the jig head with a straight tail minnow gets retrieved especially the right way you want it to be rocking back and forth with maybe a little bit of tail action. It could be a split tail, could be a single tail. There's lots of different brands out there, but for the most part, this technique thrives. The bass go, they, they fall apart. They, they come unglued when this thing is rocking side to side, which a swim bait may have a little bit of that as you retrieve it straight back to you. But for the most part, the swim bait's action actually comes from the boot tail on the back. With this technique, it is the rock of the bait, which only comes when the bait has no tail. Now, when it comes to the type of soft plastic, this is technically what you would call a fluke style of plastic. It is usually four or three and a half to six inches long. It is cylindrical. It, it is white in color or a white variety. But the one thing I'm going to say about this technique is that I've tried a whole bunch of brands. I've tried a whole bunch of different plastic variations. And the number one the lure that I found, which happens to be a sponsor product, I work with Strike King, is the Strike King Z2. And the reason why is because it is made of a Laztec material. There's nothing wrong with the traditional Zoom Super Fluke, even the Strike King uh, Caffeine Shad here. The problem is, or I guess there's a slight problem, is that they are salt infused. They have some level of salt and so they are a sinking soft plastic. For this technique, the reason it's called the hover stroll or the mid stroll or just strolling in general is that as the word stroll suggests, you want it to be a nice, slow, leisurely retrieve back to you. And the heavier the weight on the lure is, the quicker that retrieve has to be to keep it in the correct water depth. And so when you have a salt infused plastic, sinks faster, you have to retrieve it faster. If you have no salt or hardly any salt in your soft plastic, it sits, it floats higher in the water column and allows you to, as the, as the, the name of this technique says, stroll it a lot more effectively. So I know Z-Man also makes, uh, I think it's called the Jerk Shads, but I love the Strike King Baby Z2. It is a fantastic soft plastic for this technique. And when it comes to colors on this, like I said, it is a bait fish imitator. So here in my hand, you're gonna see I have a, a straight pearl, I have like a blue glimmer, I've got a uh, smoky shad, I've got a gray glimmer pearl. Basically any color that is semi shad to white to gray is gonna be good for this technique, kind of across the board, regardless of brand. And just to prove my point that the buoyancy of the soft plastic matters, the guy who I mentioned a second ago, Jeff Gustafson, who won the classic, he has been doing this technique for a long time and I actually got it on video six years ago. What were you, you throwing today? This video's not going out for a while. Another bait we're catching some fish on, just a fluke. 
on a on a jig like a quarter ounce jig we've been doing it for a long time back at home for the for the small mouths. and six years later he proved it works by winning the Bassmaster classic so now that we've talked about the soft plastics needed again i will have all my tackle in every video linked in the video description below also the good thing about the elastic material is that this thing can last you like a whole pack of these will last me the entire scoping season i can catch probably a dozen or more fish on this thing without it breaking, fantastic, that's a side note. But enough talk about the soft plastics, let's talk about the terminal tackle real quick because as this is a master class, I've gotta talk about mid strolling, uh, the Demiki rig, and hover strolling as they're all kind of in the strolling category. Now I'm gonna talk the least about the hover stroll because it's a pretty niche technique, it can work pretty well, especially for like really shallow cruising bass or when you really need your soft plastic to hover. But as you see on the screen here, it's a little bit different of, of a rigging, it takes a, a hook without any weight on it. It is not a traditional jig head and you thread the hook all the way down the, the fluke style bait and then put a nail weight in the nose of the bait. And while that offshoot of this technique probably hovers or strolls the best, I think for most anglers out there, the Demiki rig or the mid stroll, if it's rigged in the way that I'm gonna show you is the most versatile. So let's talk about jig heads. When it comes to the weight, like I said, it, when I use it mostly, it's going to be a winter time technique when the fish are suspending in the water column, they're chasing bait. And so I want it to be heavy enough that it can fall down to where the fish are, but if it's too heavy, I have to retrieve it extra fast to keep it in that, that, that area of the water column. So I have found that a 16th ounce or an eighth ounce head are the two best for me when it comes to the mid strolling or the Demiki rig. And my two favorites are going to be the Outcast Tackle Golden Eye Swimbait Head. I've worked with Outcast for years. They make some awesome products. And this one I believe is the eighth ounce three aught. And this one is the eighth ounce four aught. Now the four aught I only use really for the larger size. This is the, the full size Strike King V2. And I think it fits this bait a lot better. And the three aught hook is I think perfect for getting a good hookup ratio on the mini, the Strike King Baby Z. To. And I know it might seem really subtle, but the most important part about the strolling technique with your jig head is to have the line tie at or as close as you can to 90 degrees. That means that the, 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 uh, the, the eye itself is pointed directly up and not pointed uh, at a 45 degree angle this way or pointed directly out. I'll show two examples here on the screen of jig heads that I'm not talking about. Now, can they work? Of course they can. If you give it the right shake, anything can rock side to side, but I've just found that a 90 degree line tie with a thinner wire diameter hook, especially with it being a spinning rod technique as we're gonna talk about. So we're gonna get ourselves a Baby Z2 here. And just like I do with any other soft plastic swim bait paddle tail like this, I'm gonna take the jig head and I'm going to kind of place it right next to the, uh, the Z2 and I'm gonna see where the hook starts to bend and that's where I'm gonna poke it out. So especially with this technique, you wanna make sure you rig it as straight as possible. So I can kind of keep in my mind that it's right about there where I'm pinching my hand and I'm gonna thread it right down the center. Now with these being a, a saltless soft plastic, the material is very hard to rig. And so you really wanna take your time here, especially with this thing lasting like a dozen fish or more, you can take your time rigging this thing. And so I'm gonna rig it straight down the middle. I'm gonna poke it out kind of right where I wanted to, but then the tricky part, and this is the reason why I like a jig head that doesn't have a screw lock for this specific soft plastic, is because this, this stuff is almost impossible to screw into a screw lock. And so I'm gonna push it up the jig head and as you can see, I pushed it up. That wasn't quite good enough. And so what I do before I add any super glue, if you're going to, is I start to kind of grab the soft plastic and I'll like snap it up the jig head and look at that, after like four or five snaps, maybe I'll do a snap or two on this side to kind of give it, get it as even as I can. And then I'll kind of pinch the side here, make sure it gets the, uh, the, the soft plastic keeper on the golden eye, can kind of grab some soft plastic, give it a few more snaps. And that right there is a perfect jig head presentation. It took me all of about 12 seconds to rig this thing properly. And I'm telling you, a fish can grab this thing, pull on it. It's it's not coming off. And one thing about the rig itself is that if you wanna to go to a heavier jig head, let's say you're fishing in really deep water and you're using your forward facing sonar, and because of that, you know you need a heavier jig head to get down to where the fish are, it's gonna take a slightly different retrieve. I'm gonna kind of bridge into, into retrieves here. It's gonna take a little more shake of the rod tip to get this thing to hop back and forth, to roll left and right, as opposed to a lighter one. So that's why I stick to an eighth ounce because I'm really comfortable with the retrieve that I have set up. But if you need to go heavier, just understand it takes 
a little bit uh, more, a little more effort on the shake as opposed to a lighter one, which of course, if you're gonna over shake the bait, oftentimes it might cause it to kind of dart back and forth. And in the winter time, for fish that are very slowly following this thing, that's not the action you want. And so for winter time, I would go lighter, even if that means on forward facing or just making a cast in a certain area, you might miss where the fish are. It might take more casts. I promise you're gonna get more bites on a lighter one as opposed to a heavier one. And the last terminal tackle point that I realized I didn't discuss is that the other type of head is I think only two brands make it. And I think it's Core Tackle and uh, Gambler. And they make a jig head where the weight is distributed evenly or relatively evenly down the shank of the hook. And you basically uh, thread it all the way down there. It can kind of wreck the soft plastic as you do it. But what that does is it spreads the weight almost like the, the hover stroll does where the weight is kind of near the nose. The weight this time is down at the, the, the center of the soft plastic. And I guess in a way that could cause it to hover better than this. But I think to a certain degree, we're kind of splitting hairs here with what jig head you use. Um, even, I'll, I'll admit, even when it comes to the 90 degree line tie, but I think when it comes to the bait shaking well, as opposed to hovering, I'd rather have it shake well than hover well. And this thing hovers good enough. I've caught plenty of fish in this technique. I have not used the core tackle or the gambler heads, um, but I've also not seen a whole lot of pros using that for this technique. And so pro fishermen are not the end all be all for if a technique is good or not, but usually they have figured out if techniques are, or if, if terminal tackle is worth having. And so I'm sure some of them love that style jig head, but a lot more of them love just a standard uh, 90 degree jig head with this soft plastic. But when it comes to the actual retrieve of shaking the rod tip super quickly and ever so slightly throughout the entirety of every single cast, that is very difficult to do on a bait caster, even a BFS model. And so I think this technique is best suited for a spinning rod, even if you get up into the quarter ounce or above jig heads. Now, the exact combo that I use is my most expensive combo I have. It is a, a 6.9 medium light Luz Elite Rod. It is a, I think it's like a $400 rod, as well as the Luz Custom Light Spinning Reel, which I think is only 150, so it's a, it's a heck of a deal for this, this quality of a reel. But this thing is definitely expensive. I like to have my most finesse techniques where I really need to feel the bite to have my most quality rod on, but there are plenty of good budget medium light power rods out there. And so I will leave several of them linked down in the video description, including ones that I've used before for drop shots, because basically whatever your favorite drop shot combo is, as long as it's medium light, that's what you're gonna use for this technique. You can use a medium as long as it's a, it's a fast or a moderate fast taper, but if you have an extra fast tip on a medium heavy spinning rod, you're gonna have a, a hard time using the, uh, as you'll see in the retrieval here, using the slack of your line to, to shake it and make the bait roll side to side. And this exact combo here, it's expensive, but it works so dang good. And as far as the line goes, I like Tactics Braid by Seagar. I believe this is 10 pound, maybe 15 pound braid, but it's really, really thin. It allows for good casting distance. I hardly get any wind knots on this thing. And I have a 300 sized reel. And the reason for that is because I think the line flies off the spool a little bit easier. Uh, and so that's why I choose that size reel, that size line. And then when it comes to fluorocarbon, you can get super finesse. You can go even smaller as far as the bait with this and go with like a four, six pound fluorocarbon leader but I just go with a standard 10 to 12 pound Seaguar gold label. Gold label is just a liter material. It is thinner than your average fluorocarbon. I mean, I guess I could go down to like six pound, but I catch plenty of fish at the at the 10 or the 12 pound. And so that's what I stick with. It is super strong. It lasts me a lot of different, uh, a lot of different fish catches. And then the connection knot is an FG knot that my editor ties. Ain't that right? <laughs> Shake, shake the camera, yes. He ties my FG knots because I still haven't learned. So now that we've talked about the rod, reel, and line, we've also talked about the actual gear, the terminal tackle, and the baits. It's time we go on the water and show you guys the retrieval on this technique in the most popular way right now, which is strolling. So when it comes to the retrieval methods of this Domeki rig, shaking the minnow, whatever you want to call it, it's pretty dang simple. Now, when you're retrieving and casting a, a, a paddle tail swim bait, you cast it out there, let it sink to your desired depth. If you have fish finders, of course, you should know how deep the fish are, you can count the lure down. If you don't, you're gonna have to do trial and error. But as soon as you do that, then you start a straight retrieve, just like this. The problem is this bait here on purpose doesn't have a paddle tail. It has no action on a straight retrieve. And so you have to add what's called a shaking the minnow presentation. Here's what that looks like. After the bait has fallen, you can either start reeling and shaking up. You can reel and shake to the side or reel and shake down. And when I say shake, I don't mean 
shake like this. You're not working a flutter spoon. You're not hopping a Texas rig off or a jig off the bottom. It is a very, very minimal shake. Taylor, can you zoom into my hand here and show the people what's going on? You, I mean, I'm talking top of the rod tip, maybe four to six inches of shake, almost like the, the same retrieve of working a topwater frog or a topwater spook, where you're allowing a little bit of slack in your line. That's the same thing that's happening here. And like I said, it can happen both with the rod tip up to the side or down, whatever feels most comfortable for you. Dude, I've got one. Holy cow. I, I, I'm not joking, you guys. It's gotta be a catfish. Whoa. I was letting it sit on the bottom, not live scoping. My, my live scope is on, but I'm not using it at all. I made a blind cast, just kind of shaking it very, very slowly, and I have hooked something giant. I feel like it's a catfish. Again, with this technique, it's usually a smaller, smaller jig head, smaller wire diameter, and so I don't want to, you know, horse this fish in. I have no clue what it is. Whoa, whoa, hello. Oh my gosh, he's, on, he's hooked on the gill. He's hooked on the gill. I think I was shaking this thing so slow down there, this fish just came and checked it out and I nabbed him right on the side of the head. Y'all are, I mean, are not gonna believe me. Yes, sir. <laughs> Look at that bass. I know this seems suspect, but a camera guy, nod the camera right now. He can promise that this guy was probably just following it down there. Oh my goodness, just barely hooked on the Damiki, the hover stroll, whatever you wanna call it. Beautiful, six, six and a half, seven pound. Texas winter bass. That is so awesome. I proved to you guys, this thing can catch them even when you're not live scoping. You know what? If the water's as cold as it is today, 38.6, work this thing as slow as you can, keep it down near the bottom, and that's the kind of results you can get. Yes! 6.30, almost a six and a half pounder. Gosh, that's awesome. Healthy as can be, feeding on minnows down there. Just had to go slow with the uh, hover bait. Got him. Well, my goodness, folks, what a detour. That was nuts. I was not expecting to catch one, especially during the teaching portion. That's why I love this job because it's so unexpected. But back to the teaching. So I'm gonna cast out there and show you guys, again, with, with the shake, it is so cr critical to have your wrist, almost like you're, you're strumming the guitar. Yeah, I'm gonna put an image on the screen of my favorite guitarist, Corey Wong, and when he strums, his hand looks like jello, looks like uh, there's no bones. That's kind of what you wanna have when you're shaking the minnow is that when you start retrieving, again, a slow, steady retrieve, maybe one turn of the handle every second, second and a half, and throughout the entire retrieve, you are using your pointer finger, at least here on a spinning rod, to kind of add some pressure to shake the bait, and it is, it is almost like a jello hand. And so same thing with, with the side. I'll go from my, my finger here uh, on, the, on the top retrieve to the side of it, and then kind of keep it there for a bottom retrieve. But for all three, whatever one feels most comfortable for you, you gotta have jello hand. And the last tip that I think is a really sneaky one when it comes to using this technique, especially on a cast and retrieve, is that you don't wanna begin your retrieve with too much aggression. So I've got my live scope recording down here on my screen. Let me show you exactly what I mean by this. And I'm gonna tell you again, just cause you're seeing live scope on the screen doesn't mean you have to use it. I'm just using it to show you what your retrieve could look like in both a good form and a bad form. So imagine that little hump there on the bottom at 50 feet is a fish. It's not, but I'm going to cast out there and I'm going to show you guys the wrong way to begin your retrieve. Bait's falling there at 55. I'm going to start the retrieve like this. And as you can see, the bait shot up a good three and a half to four feet off the bottom. But the way that it started was, in my opinion, especially for this technique, which excels in cold water, it was just a little bit too much aggression. So let me show you the correct way. I'm going to reel in here, make a cast out to the same area. And I'm going to start my retrieve very softly. Right there, barely shaking it. And now I'm shaking it. And I only rose maybe six inches off the bottom. And I think in my opinion, and all the fishing I've done with this technique, it is a much better way to not scare fish. Oftentimes I wanna cast this thing uh, a good five to 10 feet behind them. But if you land right on top of them and then immediately start shaking really fast, that can actually scare a fish. And I've seen that happen on forward facing sonar. Almost like you are catching the bait on the way down, kind of slowing it down very slowly and then beginning. The, the analogy that I think about or metaphor, whatever it is, uh, is a, a soccer player. When a cross comes in, they are using their foot backwards and down to cradle a soccer ball. 
or almost a tennis player cradling a, a tennis ball as his racket goes backwards. That's the same kind of thing you want to do with the hover stroll, the mid stroll, the Mickey rig, uh, is that you want to kind of cradle that bait as it gets down there. Now, of course, if you don't have forward facing sonar, it's a little bit harder to do, but you can still learn. Like I'll, I'll make a cast right here. I'm gonna let sink one, two, three, and I'm gonna kind of cradle it down and then start shaking. Is it possible to catch fish on a really hard, aggressive shake to begin? Of course it is. There's going to be fish that are, that are hungry, they want to feed, they don't care if it's hopping really fast. But for these cold wintertime fish where this technique, at least in my experience, is most applicable, you really want to cradle your bait on the way down and start the retrieve very subtly. Now before we get back to the bass boat to show you the live scope screen recordings of this technique, I want to hop on the bank real quick to prove to you guys this technique can work for bank anglers at the same times and at the same places you would normally throw a single paddle tail swim. Bait. Now, when it comes to the retrieve of the Jamiki, the Midstrol, whatever you want to call it, in ponds, it's a little different than lakes. So I'm not targeting individual fish on live scope. I'm casting it out there at first, letting it sink all the way to the bottom. You may want to vary your, your retrieve depth in the water column, just like you would any other paddle tail swim bait or any other reaction bait in your ponds. But to begin, I'm going to let it sink all the way to the bottom, engage my reel, and start shaking, just like you would on a lake, it's the exact same retrieve. Now, on ponds, unless you have a steep slope where you're standing, it's most of the time going to be just a rod tip up shake, maybe sideways, but hardly ever down, or your rod tip's gonna be in the water. Now, if you find yourself snagging a whole bunch of stuff, leaves, grass, twigs or the bottom itself during this retrieve in ponds, I would recommend lightening your jig head before you speed up your retrieve. When the water's cold, the fish still want this thing slow, both in ponds and in lakes. And so I would say go from an eighth ounce to a 332nd or 16th before speeding up your retrieve. No way, no way. Oh my gosh, legitimately first cast. I'm not joking you. I'm filming this fish catch portion before I'm filming the talking portion y'all just saw, this was my very, very first cast with the mid stroll in a pond from the bank, absolutely choked, top of the mouth. If y'all are not familiar with the channel, I would not lie about something as trivial as a fish catch. That was very first cast. That is just nuts. There we go, yes sir. Yes sir. Get in here. Get in this, in this boat. Get on the bank. Well, I hope this bank segment gave you some confidence that what you watch on live tournament coverage is not out of reach, even for those of us who don't have fancy fish finder technology. But luckily for this masterclass video, I do have access to fancy fish finder technology. So let's go back on the bass boat to show you guys the mid stroll in its most efficient form using forward facing sonar. There we go, a little blob down there on the bottom, or should I say big, big blob, shaking it right to him. Here he is, he's following it, I think. Yes, he is, yes, he is just as slow as I can. Again, that's the benefit of the eighth ounce jig head and the buoyant plastic. I'm gonna stop retrieving for a second and just reel, and now I'm gonna shake again. There he is, there he is, come on. Oh, he's right underneath it, Stop retrieving. Now barely shaking it. And it looks like he has turned away. Dang it. Come down, oh, he's following it. Here he comes, here he comes. Here he comes. Play cat and mouse. Keep away from him. Got him. There we go. And that right there, folks, is how you shake the minnow. Saw a fish down there on the bottom, pulled him off. Just like when you're fishing a jerk bait or any other bait using live scope, you wanna make sure you're keeping it away from him. It's hardly ever to your benefit to pause it unless the fish is, is acting super lethargic, but I kept it away from that fish, kept following it, and uh, we got him. Yes, sir. Beautiful wintertime bass. Just like I told you guys, this technique almost gets him in the roof of the mouth every single time. That one did, fish wasn't coming off. Beautiful. Oh no, there he is, there he is. Follow it up, got him. Oh no, dang it. Oh, he followed it up. I stopped it, paused it, came up again, got off. It is such a small, finesse little tactic. You're gonna have to be okay with the fact that you're not gonna land them all.
Now, because this is a masterclass video, I've got to talk about the location of which to throw this presentation, this style of lure. And because it is so similar to a paddle tail swim bait, you're basically casting retrieving, but with a slightly different action, you can throw it in the exact same places. So if a confidence location for your single paddle tail swim baits or even your Alabama rigs is on steep rock banks, over brush piles, over rock piles, on the edge of grass, you can throw the Demiki rig, the hover rig, whatever you want to call it, on the exact same location. Now, of course, when it comes to the four forward-facing sonar application of this technique, I'm targeting individual or groups of fish I'm seeing in the water column or on the bottom of the lake. But if you're fishing in ponds or lakes without forward-facing sonar, you can fish this anywhere and everywhere you would fish a traditional soft plastic swim bait. Now, I'd be a fool if I didn't at least talk about the original name and purpose of this technique, which is the Demiki rig. I've talked all about casting it out there and shaking it over a fish's head, but for the longest time, this technique was not used in a cast and retrieve way. It was used in a dropping down vertical way called hanging the minnow, or as my friend Jeff Gustafson calls it. Called it moping before. But whatever you call it, moping, Demiki rig, hanging the minnow, that's what anglers were excelling at with 2D sonar. Live scope forward facing sonar was not even a thought in anglers minds back then, but they would take this technique here, especially with the buoyant soft plastic and the 90 degree line tie. They would see a fish on 2D sonar or just know where a good group of fish are and they would drop it vertically let their rod tip sit, and then almost kind of live scopey, they would see the, the, the kind of like the, the flasher symbol, the 2D color come higher up to their bait, and they would slowly reel it and kind of keep it away, play, play keep away with that fish, and it would eat this thing, and it excelled in really, really cold, clear water. And now because of forward facing sonar, we were able to use this technique in a far superior way, which is casting away from the boat. Now, can you still use this bait in a vertical way? Absolutely, I'm not saying you can't drop this thing down there and mope yourself up a big one. But I think for the most part, it is a cast and retrieve technique. And I hope you guys have learned that today. Well, my goodness, folks, that was so much information. Hopefully you learned something. And this video is the catalyst for you trying out, if you haven't yet, the Demiki rig, the hover rig, whatever you want to call it. It catches fish all across the country for me. And I've proved it works both in ponds and in bass boats with and without technology. As always, I will have the exact combo line and bait I was using linked in the video description. If y'all could shop for your tackle using those links, it would help the channel continue to grow. And if you want to watch a previous masterclass video I made about the Alabama rig, which is basically taking this technique, adding a paddle tail, and throwing about five or six of them at once, I will leave that video up here in the corner. It is an awesome technique, catches some giant bass, and it's pretty much on the, on the polar opposite side of the spectrum of this thing, but it's still a lure that every angler should have in their tackle box and should learn to use. My name is Tyler, and we'll see you guys next time right here on TRF. I heard if you got the flu, it helps. You know, you're, when you're cold at night, you're shaking. <laughs>